Welcome back to the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot, Part 11. Today we cover caching. So far, everything we've done, the front end made a request to the back end, and then the back end turned around, went to the database, got some data, put it together, and then went back to the front end. This operation is actually very slow. It doesn't feel like it when we're running everything locally, but in real life, this is a very time-intensive operation. Caching is when you move some of the data from the database into memory on the server. Doing this allows the response time to be much quicker. So when should you cache? If your data does not change very often, or many users are trying to get the same data all at once. So for example, Justin Bieber uploads to Instagram and everyone gets the notification to go look at it. When not to cache, when the data needs to be 100% correct and up to date. And if performance isn't an issue, then it might not be worth the time to spend all the developer hours adding it. In this video, we're going to use Spring Boot's default cache annotations and cache manager. So we're gonna cover enable caching, cacheable, cache evict, cache put, and then eventually we'll make a custom cache configuration. Okay, let's get started. We're going to cache our get product service endpoint. But before we do that, boot up your project, let's get a baseline. When I ping this endpoint, I can see it takes 261 milliseconds, but this doesn't count. The first time you ping a project in Spring Boot after it boots up, it has to do a bunch of extra stuff. So go ahead and ping it again, and we get 11 milliseconds. Ping it a few more times, we get 12, 13, 12, 10. So we'll call it about 12. Okay, to enable caching in our project, we go to the class that holds our main method and annotate it with enable caching. Then go to our get product service class and we're going to annotate the return method with at cacheable. And then we need to pass in a string, which is the name of our cache. I'll name it product cache. Reboot your project. When I ping it again, again, the first time I get 200 milliseconds, which doesn't count. Send it again, and this time I'm getting six, five, five, and four. But we have our first problem. I'm going to update that product using the put method. And you can see that it's been updated. When I ping the get product method again, I don't get the updated value. That's because the previous result was cached. This is known as stale data. To fix this, go over to your update product service, annotate it with at cache evict, value is equal to product cache, with a key is equal to hashtag command.getid. And this command.getid has to match up with the command.getid on line 28 that we pass into our find by ID method. Essentially what's happening is there's a key value pair in our cache and we have to tell Spring Boot which one to evict. So anytime this method is run, it's going to evict the cache with this key value pair. Let's do the same operation again. We get the product. This time we do get the updated product because we restarted the execution. Ping in a few more times, we're getting five milliseconds. Now let's go ahead and update it again. So I'm gonna revert it back to what it was, Samsung Galaxy S21, send. It did update it. Now when I do get product, I get the most up-to-date result. However, notice that we have a time of 10 milliseconds, meaning this value was not cached. It had to go to the database to get the most recent one. So to fix this, we're gonna make one more change change cache evict to cache put. So evict just throws away the value in the cache and doesn't replace it with anything. Put throws it away and then puts the return value of the method back in the cache. So reboot your project, ping your endpoint, update your product, and then do a get product again. And not only do you get the updated product, 
but it's also cached. Okay, this was the simplest way to implement it, but you might want a more custom option. If that's the case, go to the root of your project and create a new Java class called cache configuration. Annotate it with at configuration, at enable caching, and at enable scheduling. Use the annotation at bean, and then create a method called public cache manager, cache manager. Create a new instance of the concurrent map cache manager. We then have the option to set some custom values. So in this case, we'll say values to false, meaning if a method returns null, we're not going to put it in the cache. And then names, and we can pass in a list of whatever we want our cache names to be. That way we can manage it all in one place. And then we'll return the manager. So this bean annotation, this is a new one. Basically what happens is the return value of this method gets injected into the Spring container using dependency injection. We're going to talk about this more after the security section, because in the security section, we're going to have to do a lot of different beans, as well as some other things that have to do with dependency injection. So for now, just know that this goes in a special place in Spring. We can also do a scheduled evict. So use the annotation at cache evict, with the value is equal to product cache, all entries is equal to true. And we'll do at scheduled with a fixed delay of 7,000 milliseconds or seven seconds and an initial delay of zero. We then do public void evict product cache and we'll just print out evicting cache. The combination of these two annotations, scheduled plus cache evict, basically evicts the cache on a scheduled basis. Boot up the project, and if you go to the console, you can see every seven seconds, the product cache is automatically evicted. And of course, you can test it out. Okay, a couple of quick notes. There are other cache managers besides Java Spring Boot's default cache. My work, for example, uses Caffeine Cache. You can use the cache manager for custom configuration. Cache increases performance and reduces wear on your database but it's more complex to implement and you might get stale data. And lastly, the scheduling annotation is not cache specific. You could use it for any regularly scheduled task. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.